times of crisis, it's been a nightmare. What you need is accurate, COVID 19, up to date, and in depth information. This virus will be with us for a long time. And in this most challenging time, when the whole world is being ravaged by the most frightening pandemic, there is no easier way to stay informed than to stay home. Hello everyone. Welcome to Taipei as well tonight. And stay with us. Taipei as world. We bring Thailand to the world. สวัสดีค่ะ Very good evening and welcome to our seven o'clock news Thai PBS World tonight. I am Natha Gomonwadin live from Thai PBS studio in Bangkok and k u n t e p Chai Yong joining me online. Good evening, k u n t e p Chai. Good evening and สวัสดีครับ It's always uh, very encouraging when to see that we can continue to hold down the number of new infection cases to a single digit for several consecutive days now. And it looks like everybody is looking forward to the second phase of the easing of the lockdown measures, despite uh, some small drawbacks uh, in the past few days. When uh, a lot of people I mean, take it advan taking advantage of the relaxation of the shutdown to go out, enjoy themselves, and uh, certainly in some cases, I mean, ignoring. The social distancing requirement. So this is uh, certainly posing a small headache for the authorities. That's right, because it's all under speculation whether people can enjoy more relaxing of easing restriction or not. And as k u n t e p Chai said, it's single digit for about two weeks now for the new infection in Thailand. And today the figure is about six, and no new fatality in Thailand. But yet, k u n t e p Chai as Ritual, perhaps during press briefing, is always that Dr. t o w i s i n Wisnu Yotin, spokesperson for CCSA, keeps telling us that the guard has to be maintained and not to be too complacent with the COVID-19 situation. Yeah, and it's so unfortunate that uh, four of the six new cases were reported in the tourist island of Phuket. Which is now uh, being categorized as a hotspot of the of the pandemic, and of course, uh, as we uh, have seen over the weekend, we saw thousands of people trying to uh, leave uh, the island, and these people had been held back for 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 weeks now, and so they were so eager to leave the island, uh, despite caution by authorities that they should not uh, flock out of the at the island in in large groups, because it would. Uh, Certainly, I mean, jeopardize all the efforts by authorities to to try to make sure that people have social distancing and not expose themselves. I mean, to the possibility of uh, contracting the the virus. So this is another issue that authorities is trying are finding difficult to find it difficult to deal with. It's very tough challenge for authority right now to keep people from doing. In trying to comply with social distancing, another location which happened over the weekend is in Bang San t h o n b u r i area, in which we can see how people flock into the area, even though they cannot visit the beach right now. But mm -hmm. there, are lots of people queuing up, and the traffic is quite bad because they try to arrive at Khao Sa Muk, in which it is another. Well-known area, especially for people in Bangkok, who just want to spend one hour or two hours away from the capital. So Bang San is very good location for people. And right now we can see how it has been very crowded over the weekend. And uh, the authority, the local authority of Bang San, is trying to have procedure to regulate people. And following social distancing. Yeah, there were there were some the not so desirable scenes on uh, in Bang San and c h u n b u r i over the weekend. As Gunatha mentioned, thousands of people flocked there to take advantage of their newfound freedom. But the problem is that uh, uh, these people obviously ignore all precaution regarding social distancing. Many people did not even wear face masks. While socializing in proximity, in proximity, 
and others were seen gathering in large groups to enjoy drinking and dining together. So local authorities said they are very concerned that similar scenes will be repeated in the coming weekend. So they are floating the possibility of reintroducing some of the stringent lockdown measures to prevent a repeat of the situation. This period is quite crucial, Kun Thep Chai, because authority review the number every day and see how people comply with the measures every day before they make a decision on about 15th of May or this Friday. And that will have the result or that will have an impact on the decision to ease restriction in the second phase. So now let's take a look to the draft plan of the authority of the CCSA, what the decision will be and what will be the group of business activities that can allow to be reopened during the second phase. Yeah. So the business so, will include yeah, so dine-in services at restaurants, food shops, ice cream parlor and office canteens. So this is enlarged of activity from the first phase, Kun Thep Chai. Yeah, so this will be, that will mean uh, more flexibility for services at uh, food shops and restaurants, even in office canteens as, uh, as happening in most places, that even in canteens in your own offices, you are not allowed to be served or uh, even die in there. And uh, another group include department stores, shopping and community malls. This will be the reopening in nearly two months. And that includes retail and hotel sales store as well. But there are some exceptions still like fitness center and some other activity like conference halls in the department stores are not allowed to be reopened yet. And another group is beauty salons. So extra activity will be allowed to resume like hair dyeing and hair perm services and nail salons. So good news for, <laughs> for both gentlemen and ladies who are, have been longing for full services at their favorite uh, salons. <laughs> That's right, because it's been quite a long time that people would like to visit proper and having beauty, having proper beauty service Another group are outdoor and health activities which can resume like beauty clinics and weight and health clinics, outdoor team sports without spectators, botanic and flower gardens, museums and galleries, and traditional Thai massage. The second groups are also quite crucial as well, Kun Thep Chai, because it means people can spend time doing activities that they like, especially outdoor. Yeah, a lot of uh, sports tournaments, soccer, basketball, volleyball have been uh, postponed. So this uh, is coming uh, like a piece of uh, very, very good news for, for these people. And of course, I mean, it's quite clear that uh, all the tournaments that will be permitted will be held without spectators on the stand. So it will be quite, quite a challenge I mean, for, for these sports people <laughs> to play, not being seen by, by their, their fans uh, in, in, the, in the stadiums. Yeah. yeah, very new normal indeed. And for traditional Thai massage is very crucial because this belong, a certain group of people have joined in this business, so it will be revival of this business, business of Thai massage. And the other groups and health activities which can resume probably are internal office meetings and lectures, group discussions by teleconferencing, TV outdoor location shooting for crew, not more than five people, Kun Thep Chai. Yeah, if you notice that many of your favorite uh, TV programs have been shot on stu in studios because uh, the crews are not allowed to go out uh, for location shooting. So this should come, of course, as another piece of good news for people in TV business, either shooting for documentaries, for 
programs uh, for, for commercials. I mean, so the, finally these people can go out and do shooting on locations. Yes, because it's been totally stopped for nearly two months for outdoor shooting of the TV programs and TV drama. So. Yeah, but Dr. Toby Sin uh, emphasized that uh, these, uh, these businesses' activities are still under consideration when or how they will be relaxed. So this is not the final list of the final list of, of activities that would be permitted. So hold your breath. I mean, it should, this should be clear in the next few days. Yes, probably this Friday. So we have to stay tuned what will be the second phase of activity and what are the group of business activities. And during this COVID-19 crisis, Kuntep Shai, another activity that probably is beyond imagination is cupboard of sharing happiness in which we see many locations of having cupboards in which people bring food supply, drinks, bottle of water, and finished noodle to put it in a cupboard in location that people have located these cupboards in different places to share mm. food supply yeah. to one another. So these uh, pantries have sprung up across the country in almost every province now, Kunata. So this is very hard lifting. I mean, this is an act of giving that certainly makes a big difference in this time of crisis. And as you can see in, 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 the, in the, uh, the scenes on the screen right now, these are people who come here and drop the essential items such as uh, uh, noodles, I mean, uh, instant noodles, uh, bottles of water, and anyone who needs them can come in and, 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 and pick uh, whichever items they want. Of course, I mean, with the caution that they should uh, pick whatever they need, not, uh, and, and of course, but so, uh, as expected, nothing, not everything went well at all of the locations of the pantries. There were scenes of people scrambling, scrambling to have their hands on the do donated items and at some locations, family members were seen scooping up every single item from the pantries. So uh, this is, of course, I mean the negative side of this yeah. this phenomenon, which otherwise is where it comes at a at a very inspiring uh, phenomenon indeed. That's right. We can see downsides of how people try to take advantage of those food supply in the pantry, but overall it seems very good idea for people to share what they have and try to share with others during this difficulty. Yeah. And Kuntep Chai, another activity happening over the weekend is Chatujak Weekend Market. It's very mm -hmm. well-known market in Bangkok, and it's reopened again only during the daytime, but people can enjoy this weekend market again. And now let's take a look at the report. It is a while that Thailand has been in the stage of lockdown according to the pandemic of COVID-19. Many places in Thailand have been closed according to the lockdown. The government start to ease lockdown and I am standing here at Chadujak Market, which is one of the most famous markets in Thailand. And today is the first day of a reopening of the market. The famous market, popular among both Thai and foreign tourists, was closed in mid-March as part of the government's anti-COVID-19 lockdown measures. It reopens today, May 9th, amid a subdued atmosphere, with most shops remaining shuttered and few shoppers. The BMA's Deputy Permanent Secretary inspected the market to ensure that all preventive measures are in place, such as temperature checks at the entrances, the wearing of face masks by both shoppers and vendors, and social distancing. And behind me right now is a temperature measure. Everyone who comes to the market will need to be measured the temperature if the body temperature is more than 37.5, they have to wait until the temperature is cooling down. If not, they could not get in the market.
Most of the shoppers today wear ties, and all were seen wearing face masks with some wearing face shields. The night market remains closed due to the night curfew. That's the report by our reporter Kun Chatri Suwan Walai Gon Kun Thep Chai. Yeah, and the good news is that the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration has decided to extend the opening hours of the Jatjak Market on Saturday and Sunday to 7 p.m. Uh, because I'm sure that would be good news for shoppers because during this summer, uh, of course, the weather is very hot during the day. So extending the opening hours late into the evening should certainly come as a piece of welcome news. <laughs> yes, that's back to life, but not business as usual for Jatujak market. And what will be the future in terms of security affairs in Thailand during this COVID-19 and post-COVID-19? Right now, we have Professor Panithan Vatanayagon, Chairman of Prime Minister's Security Advisory Committee, joining us. Good evening, Swadikha Jan. Very good uh, evening to you. I noticed that you just had a haircut. <laughs> uh, yes, right? for the first time in two months. Uh -huh. uh, adopting a very new procedure that uh, the barber have to wear protective gears and, uh -huh. and have a haircut in the open space. Uh, open space is a problem. Uh, we, we need to find a better location uh, uh -huh. rather than uh, uh, a usual barber shop. But of course, barber shop is now opens uh, with uh, a new measure. So I think this is a new beginning of the new uh, phrase that we are uh, now uh, living. Uh, a, a more relaxed on one hand, a more worry on another hand, uh, uh -huh. because of uh, more activities, uh, more social uh, interactions uh, that could bring more uh, cases up in the next uh, uh, few weeks. So this is yeah. uh, uh, very closely monitored uh, by, by, by different agencies. Yes. And Ajahn Parichan, any points of concern for you in particular during this easing of restriction after the first yes. round and the second phase probably is coming? Yes, yeah, a, few, a few concerns, of course. Uh, number one, uh, I think the uh, feeling of uh, safe and secure uh, could be misleading for the people. Mm. You see the number of cases down into the single digit, as Kun uh mentioned. But you notice that it began to rise in the last few days from mm. almost zero or zero cases. And now you, you can see uh, six cases, seven cases, eight cases in the last few days. Particularly the concentration uh, is in the south on the tourist town and border towns. So I think false perception could be one of the main concerns as people are now resuming their activities. You see many, many reports on restaurants do not follow you know, the procedures, uh, different offices do not follow the procedures. The uh, police and the healthcare people are now putting together a, a rapid uh, uh, unit, you know, mobile unit to uh, mm. Uh, give suggestions uh, to the people to to follow a, a strict guideline. So, so that's number mm. one. Uh, number two, mm. although slightly, the uh, violation cases are, uh, are down, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, breaking the curfew or in terms of uh, uh, not uh, assemble more than uh, a few people uh, at home. Uh, you, you, you see a slightly down you know, in, in the last few days, uh, but this number uh, was rising up, you know, in, in certain mm. places, in certain areas. And lastly, of course, Kun yeah. Kun political activities are now up. You see, you can see a, a lot of uh, 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 communications uh, leading to preparation in terms of protests, protesting mm. in terms of, of course, the uh, uh, packages, uh, relief packages, but. Uh, protesting uh, in case of uh, check and balance in terms of mm -hmm. how the budget uh, is used uh, by mm -hmm. the government or protesting in certain areas like like now to, uh, today and last 
few days in the north yeah. uh, mm. for more opening up, you know, more more ease uh, measures mm. Mm. Uh, in certain areas. So you see these uh, activities uh, maybe rise up in the next few days. Yeah. Dr. Baitan, uh, we'll talk about the uh, political activities later on. But on the uh, on the larger scale, do you foresee the possibility of uh, some of the stringent shutdown measures being reintroduced if the situation gets out of hand? Say there are, I mean, certainly an a surge in the number of new infection cases. Well, I think we are on a, uh, of course, downward trend. It's very lucky for Thailand, mm. and of course, uh, thanks to the Thai people, I think they have been very much able to cooperate among each other, uh, among different mm. agencies. But but this downward trend may may go up, as you can see in our neighboring countries. I think Malaysia is now extending uh, their uh, measures for the f for the fifth time until June, until early mm. June. I think that that's an indicator in certain. Uh, different countries in in South Korea and 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 in other places. Of course, you have places like New Zealand uh, are now stepping down uh, to the level three. I think the two more levels from the highest alert. Uh, but but in Thailand, uh, we have to wait and see. We have to we have to uh, evaluate every day as we go in the next mm. uh, few days. Uh, and the uh, the uh, National Security Council Secretary General already indicated uh, uh, yesterday that. Uh, it might be possible uh, for more lifting you know, of the uh, strict measures, including the emergency decree. But this is not uh, determined uh, uh, yet. Uh, uh, it it, it depends very largely in the next few days, really. Yeah, but lifting of emergency decree would be in the next phase, like third phase or fourth phase, not in second phase? Well, uh, I think if you ease the restrictions, it will be more practical uh, for the different agencies to step down their measures. But if you lift the emergency decree totally, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of uh, mechanisms uh, must be dismantled. Some of the mm. uh, centers and uh, some of the orders uh, must be lifted or, 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 or canceled. So that will leave the authority uh, very, very uh, uh, worried. Uh, that uh, mm. they are lacking of the effective tools. Uh, they may have to go back and use the uh, uh, healthcare uh, uh, courts and restrictions. But as as you know, uh, in the last uh, few months, uh, that's not enough uh, to really uh, uh, control you know the spread of the virus. So so this is a, a very uh, critical decision making that the uh, administration uh, must make in the next few days. Yeah. Dr. Panetta, uh, you talk about the daily evaluation of the, the result of the easing of the, the shutdown measures, right? And now we have been now in second week of the easing of the, of the restrictions. So out of 10, how much do you think that we have achieved? <laughs> well, uh, the survey is still going on. I'm, I'm sure Kunte uh, Pachai Kunata uh, have completed a uh, uh, survey already. Uh, of the center. Uh, uh, if you are not completing, I urge you to complete that survey. I think the <laughs> evaluation will be more uh, completed uh, with participation from the public. Uh, but of course, uh, I think the, uh, um, the uh, satisfactory level is quite high in terms of mm. cooperation. Uh, I think the authority is quite, quite certain that they can handle the situation. The level of uh, satisfactory uh, from the public is also high for the administration's handling. I think we, we are moving into the second phase, I think uh, uh, much better uh, in shape you know, and form than many expected. But of course, this mm -hmm. can turn very uh, as worn today by the government persons. Uh, uh, is, this can turn very drastically, you know, uh, 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 change into a very significant, serious problem. So uh, you, you have to be very careful and exercise uh, 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 cautious. It's a uh, very common sense. Mm -hmm. You go out more, you you have more contacts. Uh, the virus is still around. It's very, very true that the virus is very honest. Uh, they will not, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, will not pick and choose anyone, you know, they will get infected. You know, so the virus is still out there. And we, we don't know much about this virus. I think the 
impacts the, uh, the 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 consequences to where they are spreading. We learn almost every day. The scientists learn almost every day. So you have mm -hmm. to be very careful in this period. But at the at least life needs to return to normal. That's indeed it is true. I think shutting down uh, completely uh, affect uh, enormous uh, you know, uh, economic and society. And we don't know how very many actually uh, 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 have a, a serious impact uh, until mm -hmm. we completed the survey. But estimate is very very serious uh, to the society. Mm -hmm. So you cannot lock down and shut down like this anymore. You need to move on. Uh, this is a second phrase that you need to have a good balance. Once a vaccine al arrives, you know, if it is arriving in the next uh, mm -hmm. year or two, uh, then you can uh, move into the new society, new production, new structure. But that new society must uh, begin today uh, by evaluating uh, every day uh, how we are going to do uh, about our life in the new world, in a new society. Mm. Uh, you need to uh, be very serious about a tool, a mechanism to change the society, production, tourism, and, 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 and others. I, I'm sure you're going to talk about that today. But that period is now. You need to begin to map out the exit strategy. You need to point out to the people uh, what kind of light at the end of the tunnel. Once vac vaccine arrives, uh, how are you going to distribute the vaccines? Uh, and uh, how are you going to go out uh, and, and do things uh, after that? Uh, that's the third period. It will be even mm. more challenging uh, as we now uh, know that we need to adopt a new life. I think uh, for me, I think uh, the classes on campus will begin soon in the next few weeks. Uh, I think we, we cannot go back to the old same classroom anymore. I think. Uh, the new application online, the uh, uh, online learning are now in full swing and it will not go away. I think this is also uh, together with uh, cyber crimes and you know, uh, a lot of uh, problems on internet. Uh, this will be with us for a long, long time. Ajahn Banitan, with the, right now we are, as you mentioned, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and we have to start planning for exit strategy. And what do you see contact tracing, the use of contact tracing? Because people may be suspicious whether it will intervene between privacy, their personal privacy and security. That's the same old issue. What do you think the authority should try to communicate with Thai people? Well, of course, I think uh, you need to have a good balance. Uh, in the beginning, of course, in the first phrase, you, know, you need to control the spreading of the disease of the virus, I think uh, security uh, must come first, uh, uh, and then maybe freedom uh, may be put into second. But but it has to go together, actually, uh, in the second period, uh, hand in hand. Uh, and this is not uh, it is not surprising that we have two important now laws. Effectively, uh, one is of course cyber security, protecting infrastructure protecting the security of the use you know, on, on, online. And at the end of the month, yeah, as you know, we have a data privacy protection law uh, will be in place on the 27th of this month. That will give a good balance uh, and to ensure a uh, young generation that their privacy will be protected. But this has to be, of course, uh, uh, a common ground uh, for two different uh, groups of people who are concerned differently to meet and to, to work together. We are expecting that in the next few weeks, uh, uh, the debate on how to achieve a good balance between security and privacy, between freedom and security, uh, will return you know, to uh, uh, the uh, uh, society. And it will be a very hot debate yeah, uh, in this period. Yeah. Dr. Tan, we have been coping with the pandemic mostly from the health aspects which is understandable because doctors have been calling the shots mostly. But I'm sure that as the chairman of the Security Advisory Committee of the Prime Minister, you must have a security perspective on this pandemic too. So what, what, what is it? Well, I think, uh, of course, uh, it's very early uh, mm -hmm. to predict, uh, as most analysts uh, uh, mm -hmm. are saying, but of course you need to do that anyway. Uh, you're already anticipating more uh, problem ahead between relationships of superpowers, and, and mm -hmm. that's quite clear. Uh, you can see some of the uh, uh, productions um, 
being down, we move out from different countries to different countries. Uh, I think uh, supply chain are now disrupted. Uh, some may not come back. Uh, critical infrastructures, uh, some will be uh, um, expanding, some will be uh, uh, collapsing. So, uh, mm. for example, the, I think the, uh, the cyber internet will, will be up and running even more. Uh, I think that, that will be, uh, has to be prepared. I think uh, tourist industry must change, I think. Mm. Allies industry must change. The military must change. Uh, uh, yeah. They need to plan much better uh, mm. in terms of uh, new emerging, uh, emerging diseases. Uh, they need to pull up that plan to a, a higher priority. They need to train more uh, officers. Uh, they need to have a maybe permanent certain units and infrastructure like satahi, you know, uh, mm. sanctuaries mm. or quarantine. Uh, they need to have a, a permanent uh, staff or budget. You know, uh, all of this must be recalculated uh, in the framework of the national strategy. Uh, it's mandated mm. by the constitution, and, and I think we are now beginning to map out uh, this new structure. Uh, it's, it's still too early, but yet uh, you, you can sense that uh, uh, there are some uh, things that can uh, cannot be the same. The bureaucracy, uh, many of them may have to stay at home, work from home. You know, and, and, and many others must retrain, upskill. Uh, but of course, the world is still full of uh, conflicts, and and uh, and also productions must resume uh, uh, to to feed the hunger. Uh, food industry will be very good for Thailand. A uh, health industry, healthcare should be very good for Thailand. But how? In what way? Who will do it? Uh, uh, under what plan? Uh, these are very tough questions. We, we have been having uh, military exercises with our allies, right? Like the annual COBRA military exercises. Maybe it's about time that we started thinking of having exercises uh, to deal with pandemic like this. We have, we have. In the yeah. last few years, we have, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have two kind of exercises alternating uh, for COBRA goal. Uh, the, uh, the light year, we were focusing on uh, humanitarian and healthcare crisis, mm. uh, less than 10,000 forces may engage. Uh, we may need to change that in the future. Yeah. Uh, the heavy year will be uh, con with conventional uh, war fighting exercises involving more than 10, uh, 15, 20,000 troops. Uh, we may mm. need to switch that in the, in the future. Mm. But, but then again, uh, uh, you're not certain at seas what happened in South China Sea. You're not certain about North Korea. Uh, it may not change uh, by the virus, you know, th these conflicts may not uh, 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 change. Mm. In fact, they may be even more intensified. So uh -huh. uh, these are the calculations that the uh, military must make. Ajahn Parinthan, political activism seems having long pause during COVID-19, but right now we see Hong Kong protesters try to state their protests again in Hong Kong. 200 people try to group together, gather, having their own political gathering. What's about Thailand? What's the future do you see? And what will be the implication on security issue? Well, I think the check and balance uh, is quite normal and typical in the bipartisan politics uh, in many countries. I think Thailand included. Uh, I think the uh, young generation in particular are very much interested in checking uh, the power of the military, of the government, of the bureaucracy. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the performance of this current administration uh, uh, was much better than expected. I think people see the usefulness of the emergency decree. People see the usefulness of the leadership you know, during crisis. Uh, mm. It's up to the current administration uh, to really not mishandling the second period, meaning that they need to achieve a good balance. They need to focus uh, on cramping down the uh, corruption during, you know, the uh, uh, emergency uh, distributing em emergency packages. You know, economic recovery. Uh, this is going to be very tough. You know, they, they need to to make sure bureaucracy is effective, efficient in helping millions of people who are out of job. And uh, at, we don't know how how many registered. Maybe uh, 1.4 to 2 million. Uh, 
workers mm. in a, out of job, but the real numbers could be higher. So you need to reach out to these people, and it's going to be very critical. If the government doesn't do well uh, in this, I think politics could be uh, nasty or messier. But if the government is doing well, I think the people may accept that uh, uh, leadership uh, well beyond the second phase. Okay. All right. It's good to have you with us. Thank you very much, Ajahn Panitan, for joining okay. us. Okay. Keep yes, well and you. stay safe. Uh, yeah, thank please, you for your perspective. Please stay safe and, and don't be, no. don't be uh, uh, misled by the normalcy that we are now having in the second phase. Yes, uh, we are not still out of the wood yet. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. You can't let our guard down. I mean, we have been told yes. repeatedly. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for joining us. And Kun Thep Chai, it's been about a month that Muslims in Thailand cannot have their own ritual of prayer on Friday. But right now, they can be having prayer in the Muslim in the mosque. So let's take a look at this report by Kun Kittipat Chun Suk Jit. It's been around a month that all the mosques across Thailand have to be closed because of the COVID-19 lockdown. But last week, the Shaikul Islam Office of Thailand announced that people can pray the Friday Jumu'at at mosque under the very restricted measures. Even the lockdown has been eased under the restricted measures. Mosques across Bangkok still closed for the Friday Jumu'at prayer. It was around a month that Thailand have locked down measures due to the coronavirus outbreak, and many places across the country have to be closed including mosque. As mosque is one of the high-risk places for coronavirus disease because it is the place for the religious gathering. Last week, after the easing of lockdown by government, Shaikul Islam Office of Thailand announced that Muslims in Thailand are allowed to perform Friday mass prayer at the mosque under the very restricted measures and other prayers or activities except Friday prayer still not allowed to do. The mosques that organize the Friday prayer have to follow these restricted measures. The temperature scanner must be provided at the entrance of the mosque. Hand sanitizer must be provided at the entrance and inside the mosque. Visitors must bring their own prayer mat to pray. Visitors must do the ablution from their home. The floors have to mark to keep spacing of 1.5 to 2 meters for people while praying. Everyone must wear their face mask. The mosques have to be cleaned before and after prayer. Anyone who has symptoms of COVID-19 are not allowed to enter the mosque. The mass prayer must be finished within 20 minutes. Even the people are allowed to perform the Friday mass prayer at the mosque, but the mosque across Bangkok still closed. Mr. Tanarat Rasharapisut, the leader of Harun Mosque, says he really wants to reopen the mosque again, but it is still dangerous even the measure has been provided. For Masjid Harun, we found out that the restrictions is very difficult for us to manage. For example, uh, the wuzu or the ablutions to watch the face and hands and feet uh, before the prayers uh, that will not be allowed to perform in the masjid and that is very difficult. Another thing is that all the uh, believers will have to bring their own sajada uh, to the masjid and we are concerned because we are not sure whether the sajada that they have brought to the masjid is clean enough or not. The, the most difficult thing is to keep distancing of about one and a half or two meters. We do not have space enough to accommodate uh, the worshippers. Therefore, uh, in Islam, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu always teaches us to do the preventive actions rather than to do the corrective actions. That's why we do not have uh, congregational prayers 
yet. The first stage of the easing of COVID-19 curbs take effect nationwide and it will take 14 days to assess whether or not the next stage. And the situation of COVID-19 in China is perhaps full of alarm again in which Chinese authority has to pay a close look. Today alone, the new cases are nine. 17 new cases, the highest since April 20th. And they are full of worries whether second wave will be coming back to China. And right now we have Kunat Bunak joining us. Hello. Hello, Kunat. So what's the latest situation in China? Are they going to have second wave of coronavirus outbreak? So possibly there might be a second wave of COVID-19 in China because like you said just now that they found new cases of COVID-19 in China already. As of yesterday, China reported 17 new COVID-19 cases, which is the highest daily increase since 28th of April, just like what you said earlier. And the new cases are actually there are actually imported cases as well. So seven of, seven of them are imported cases. So many people are worried that the resurgence of the COVID-19 cases in China are actually imported from overseas. So that is the big worry here. And what is even more concerning is that in Wuhan, which is the former epicenter of the outbreak back in late last year, is that Wuhan actually reported five new cases and all of them are locally transmitted. And it's also the highest in two months since 11th of March, now is 11th of May. And it's the first cluster of cases since the lockdown was lifted a couple of weeks ago. So that's not really a good sign here. And what is even more alarming is that in northeastern parts of China, especially in the city of Shulan in Jilin province saw over over 10 new cases during the weekend so besides this all nearby provinces are also seeing new cases as well so it's a possibility that we might be seeing the second wave of COVID-19 in China especially the most concerning part is the imported cases here so does it mean that the imported case is something to do with Russia, as you mentioned, Northeast China? And we know that Russia is now having lots of infections each day. Is this interrelated? Uh, experts are suspecting that it might be the case, but we might have to look at other cases as well. So like you've mentioned that northeastern parts of china especially in jilin province borders russia and north korea so russia has a lot of cases to begin with and north korea despite that they have zero cases but experts suspect that there but there must be much more than that so yes there are concerns that the new wave of the virus is going to be in northeastern of China, especially in the city of Shulan, which has been classified as high risk, which is the highest of the three tier zoning system. So right now, northeastern parts of China are on high alert at the moment, especially in Shulan, where they've already placed a lockdown. So all public places have been closed down. Residents are forced to stay at home as well as the public transport has been suspended as well. Certainly not only China, which has been reminded of second wave, South Korea, Singapore are also mentioned that have to be careful of second wave. So what the situation in other countries in Asia? We'll start with Singapore first because Singapore is already experiencing experiencing the second wave of COVID-19 here. So, so far, they already had uh, 23,000 cases already compared to last month. Right now, is much more than that. And as of today, they already found more than 486 new cases as of today. But the whole situation in Singapore at the moment, they are already ramping up with 
contact tracing, restrictions on movement, and even deploying robots to encourage social distancing in the country. Other countries that are very, we can see that they managed to control the situation despite having huge risks of the second waves are South Korea and Hong Kong. So. South Korea and Hong Kong managed to flatten the curve at the moment, and they are now easing their lockdowns, and people's lives there are almost back to normal now. So, Kun Tae Pshai, it's everywhere now that has to be careful of second wave of coronavirus. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what is happening in China and several other countries? This second wave thing is a uh, a good reminder of, uh, for us that we can never take things for granted. And absence of uh, new cases or I mean, uh, continuing declining the number of new cases uh, is no guarantee that we are getting things under control. Because as long as we don't have the vaccine, then uh, we can never be sure that we can have things under control. Hopefully around mid next year we might get the vaccine. So let's keep our fingers crossed that yeah. we might get a vaccine by that time. But at mm. anyway, because because we are seeing second waves in many countries and China are seeing new cases at the moment, it's also a good reminder for us that we still need to be aware of the threats of COVID-19 to all of us. And that is also a good study for Thailand now that by the end of next week, they might be easing more restrictions. So these countries like China or even like Singapore, these are the good case studies here is for the government to reconsider whether it's worth it to ease the lockdown. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Kunat, for joining us. Thank you. So that's the story about second wave and easing restriction. Kun Shai, it seems that every authority have to try to keep balance between these two issues. Yeah, that's really, there's no uh, absolute uh, answer to the problem we are facing. So everything seems to be kind of experimental in a way. And yeah. we are in that phase now. I mean, with the easing of the restrictions and trying to evaluate the result and trying to work on the second phase of the of the relaxation of the the strict measures and let's see how things will turn out yeah 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 germany is another country that has relaxed the restriction and over the weekend we can see how people can have drive-in party but they are being reminded as well that they have to have some measure and try to keep themselves safe this is what Germany's first drive-in rave looked like. The most fun party. While nightclubs have been closed in Germany since mid-March due to coronavirus restrictions, hundreds of Germans got their party fix on Saturday night with the country's first drive-in rave. Cars parked in rows in front of the DJ, limited to two people per vehicle, and hopped around to the beach, while respecting government-imposed social distancing measures. Man hat seine eigene Party, also das ist die you have your own party. It's the first disco I've attended, where I can take my shoes off. It's a nice idea that despite the restrictions on going out, you can still party. We are having lots of fun. It's great. What else can you do during coronavirus? It is awesome. We saw the video everywhere and thought it doesn't get much better during this time. So let's check it out. But it's definitely awesome. The organizer, Holly Gadosh, who's been running Germany's largest nightclub index for almost 32 years, said that the party moves was perhaps even better than a club night because had been such craving entertainment. Although the profits from such an event are nothing compared to what his business is used to. 
Germany has the seventh highest COVID-19 caseload behind the United States, Spain, Italy, United Kingdom, Russia, and France, but has kept fatalities down to a relatively low. Recently, the country has relaxed the restrictions and allowed some businesses to reopen. Obviously, people are having lots of fun. k u n t e p s h a i and probably it can, it can be new normal of nightlife party. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And right now, what would be the new phase of Thai tourism industry? Right now, we have Senator w i r a s a k Kosurat, Senator and former Minister of Tourism and Sports in Thailand. Good evening, Senator w i r a s a k สวัสดีครับ Good evening. 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 That uh, the spread of the virus uh, mm. caught us a, a bit off guard at the beginning, nice. Nice. and then when we make have these state emergency decree, uh, people start to listen, and when we have the single message, I think we mm. have gone through quite a what a proud moment we can have in the last month, and uh, although even if the lockdown has been loosened up. Uh, Uh, doesn't seem like uh, people are are going to go that far. Mm, I see. Mm. Yeah. Kun Kun Bira Sak. Even though the parliament is not in session, but we know that the senators continue to work behind the scenes, right? But uh, except that you don't have uh, face-to-face meetings with your colleagues. But so, how do you cope yourself and your your colleagues in the Senate? How do you cope with the? How have you cope with the the uh, work from home? I mean, measure so far. The work from home part can only apply to things like uh, sending opinions, having meeting mm. on the telephone calls and Zoom like this, or other mm. network. Uh, but also, there has been quite a few cases that we have to literally, physically appear at the parliament, at the mm. s- uh, Senate uh, 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 congressional meeting, is uh-huh. the committee. And uh, uh, yeah. those of them uh, last month during April was mostly about the uh, confidential meeting. Therefore, we mm. can't do it over uh, telephone lines or or, or software. We yeah. get have to be there, but we mm. keep our distance apart. Make sure that it uh, don't everybody wear masks. And mm. uh, only this month that we have resumed. Most of the function uh, almost regularly, yeah, but we do not invite advisor, secretary uh, to join the meeting. We only mm-hmm. have those of the uh, full senatorship in the in the room so that we can keep distancing. Yeah, and senator. Yesterday, uh, mm-hmm. yes. Sorry. Senator Virasak, we know that tourism industry is the first to be hit by. COVID-19 and, and they have to get out. Yeah, and up until now, no way out. So, what what do you see the situation overall? Uh, three things. Three things that we can start. First, uh, it is that uh, we don't expect that it will resume normal until the very end of this year. Uh, that we might be able to see some of the international traveler coming back, back in, but before that, we will see more of the Thai travelers, the domestic traveler who wants to to go places uh, uh, a little bit more. But again, it's not going to be the same normal that we have seen ever. Uh, many international airlines, big one like Emirates, said that uh, they don't even. Positive to see it coming back in the next three four years. So, I think uh, this is the time where we can really sit back and start rethinking 
about what do we want to do with the destination, with the business, and the people. And that's exactly the thing that I've been talking about in the last couple of years, uh, that uh, we want to go, not only to going to quality tourism, but we want to go to uh, sustainability tourism. Whereas when we want to talk about sustainability, tourism is supposed to be a tool, not the goal itself. Uh, that mean that, uh, that's the first thing that I would like to mention. Second thing is that we have seen in the last two months that many destinations, those natural resources, the habitat, animals, marine mammals return. Fish return, caught the reef uh, look nice than ever, nicer than ever. Uh, so we see that uh, the, without tourists flocking around in too crowded, we also gain something back, which is uh, worthless, uh, is uh, uh, priceless, I'm sorry. And uh, mm. the, the third thing is that uh, at the moment, we are looking at how should we be able to adapt and have not only the government sectors, but also, and mostly, is the private sector to be able to to go through this dark tunnel and come out with a clearer thinking of sustainability. Mm -hmm. But yes, the cash flow in issue is is that point, is that the peak point now. It seems the dark tunnel must be quite dark and if we get out, I think we need really lots dark. of money. <laughs> lots of lots of money, yeah, lots of yeah. spending from tourists, yeah. Yeah. and especially we rely a lot on Chinese tourists. Do you think the first phase of tourism industry to revive should we try to welcome Chinese tourists back to Thailand? Uh, eventually, uh, those who don't have to fly far, like ASEAN traveler, domestic traveler, uh, North Asia traveler, will probably come back first. It depends on what the regulations and rules and understanding from destination to destination that can make an agreement before anyone can get on the onboard the plane of what are the rules and what are expected, what can be expected uh, before one to take the journey. Well, I don't think that we should rush into that just because we, we, we need the money only because mm. the second wave of spread has been seen in other area in the world as already. Therefore, we have to be cautious and we want to make sure that with the reopening of some certain area in Thailand, uh, in some province, let's see how it comes first. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Virasak, uh, you talk about uh, sustainability of tourism, right? But if you talk to people in the tourism industry, even if you talk to the tourism minister, I mean, uh, who is the, the, the man right now, I mean, they always talk about numbers, right? Visa, free visa, I mean, visa on arrival to attract more, even more tourists, as if we don't have enough uh, tourists now. But so how do you, where do you suggest we should start so that we can seriously, I mean, rethink this tourism uh, strategy and then really, I mean, move toward I mean, sustainability tourism. Uh, before I left the office almost a year ago, uh, one thing that I have left behind is the new law that is already in place. I've gone through the parliamentary process and it allows the government to put on a collection of some tax mm. that to be to be collected from the international travelers who are coming into the kingdom and use those money uh, mm. not only to refurbish place that has been ruined or been overcrowded, but also to buy insurance uh, mm. to cover all of those 30, 40 million international visitors who come into the kingdom uh, because we never have that law in place before. So I, I got that done. And now during the COVID-19, there has been the regulation in place already by the aviation business saying that mm. no one can enter into the kingdom without buying a or showing 
uh, proof that they have a proper, not visa, but also uh, health insurance to cover themselves. Therefore, mm -hmm. this has been started. Although the number is still very small of the incoming uh, travelers at the moment, but we we, if we can continue to keep this rule on, we will we'll get used to it. And the people who are coming here will start to get used to it. It's just like when we try to go into Europe, uh, uh, applying for Schengen visa, we will mm -hmm. we will have to buy included of the price of uh, insurance to go every time. And that's the mm. first step that we can take. Second is that I'm glad that the current administration has agreed to this direction that the Minister of uh, Natural Resource has, has uh, uh, announced that uh, he will have the at least three months closing down for the uh, national park in the in the country not all at the same time but each park has its different uh, style and different time and uh, natural time that they they look at so it's coming far into place that policy like this can be adopted from many many other uh, department and also uh, from community as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Senator Virasak, I know that it's not good to talk about figure or to be too concerned with the figure or income from tourists only. But to develop into sustainable tourism or green tourism, it means the whole supply chain in tourism industry will be affected from hotel, small and medium-sized businesses. So how, what's the strategy for those to adjust themselves if the country is moving into new sustainable tourism yeah, it, it's pretty much like talking about diet when you get too heavy uh, you might start to think about well I'm, I'm going to consume less if you start consuming less you might use uh, many strategy for to fit yourself but at least we don't look at a big bowl of soup or a big piece of steak we, we start to aim to something smaller. Therefore, the figure should be aimed smaller as well. And uh, let's see of how the income that came in will be fairly treated and fairly distributed to the whole range of uh, supply chain. Make everybody get a little bit of it, not a lot of it, or, uh, or sometimes it only stick to a group of part of the supply chain that get most of it and the rest do not get nearly enough. Therefore, some, some different people have different approach. Some people use smaller spoon, funny to say, but they say it's work for them. So the supply chain of the tourism industry is fairly long. We are talking about three, four, three, four million people in this supply chain. and. Uh, they have different way of getting themselves slimmer. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's far too early to tell them what to do. But at least we know and we, we now must accept the fact that we can't aim to the same amount of number that we have been enjoying in the last mm -hmm. 10 years. <laughs> That's a very and you get the fact, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fact yeah. in, then you start to think differently. Mm. Yeah. And it also not the condition of how easy one can fly into the country without visa that can attract mm. people because it's not only the supply chain that is affected, but the demand side is also affected. People start to think more carefully of where they want to go, what they want to do, and who they want to meet. Mm. They want to be uh, they, of course, the sanitary issue is going to be one of the top priority before they go anywhere. They want to make sure that their safety is good and they want to make sure that the communication can be, can be connected even before they, they uh, commit that, their plan of traveling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Senator, the Virasak, the, the pandemic has certainly put under the spotlight the economic and social inequality in the country. Why millions of people Absolutely. are struggling are struggling to make to, to meet ends meet, right? These daily worker, daily wage workers uh, trying to, to survive. And there are others who can I mean, work from working work from home in the comfort of their air conditioned uh, homes, <laughs> and then. Uh, but as the chair, as the, a member of the Senate committee uh, dealing with poverty and social inequality, right, Kun Vida So how? I mean, what have right. you learned from this crisis, and and how? What kind of lesson that you think can you can get from it, and then sit down and talk to members of the committee, and then come up with some some ideas on how to how to the lessons that you have from this pandemic so that we can better prepare for the next right. crisis. Right. From the very start of the pandemic, mm -hmm. we have been issuing our announcement uh, suggestion to the government, local government, central mm -hmm. government, and governor that let's try to help the supply chain intact, keep them there as long as possibly can first. Second is Workers in this industry are very crucial. Not only they, they are aware some amount of them, but also they will be the people who has the skill to be able to entertain those who need services. And those who need services may not at this moment are the international travelers, but it mm. is the people in Thailand itself. Look at Singapore Airlines. They put their air crew and air, air students to come and work to, to to take care of people who are in need of the Singaporean in need in, in their own island. Mm -hmm. uh, so the hospitality management that has already been in place in their heart be able to to help. And now we see during the return of the Thai overseas coming back to Thailand. Now they use the Thai tourism bus. They use the Thai hotel, they use mm -hmm. the Thai hospitality management, and they also use the Thai cooking facilities from restaurants and hotels to treat many, many of the group are coming back uh, and has been successfully uh, done so. So the government money paying out is directly back into uh, the system. This is not about big money. It is about mm -hmm. to make sure that they feel they know the value that they have, and uh, that is the first period. The second period I uh, would like to mention is that uh, during the the spending of the money that we borrow in to spend in the community, we say that this is one of the best time to refurbish to do the uh, friendly design mm -hmm. for all uh, in the community. Because whether we have international traveler or not, we are moving into aging society and we will have children, we have all kind of uh, age and requirement. Therefore, this little money into this little community done by the work of this little man little mm. woman who knows mm. what they want, handrails uh, and, and slope, and that kind of thing, will be useful for our community. This may, this will not require big conglomerate or companies from outside the community to come and pour this demand and mm. put on a handrail. No, mm. it's yeah. about their own people doing something good for their own community with the small money. Now, mm. this is what at least I'm very grateful that the government has listened to this part and they have agreed and made an mm. announcement that at least these 400,000 million baht that they mm. borrow will be spent wow. on this kind of activity in the community. They are not talking mm. about big, big, big project. Right. So this is the second thing. Mm. The third thing is that Soon enough, the, the, the resume of traveling domestic is going to happen. We want to make sure that this is a good training. Uh, make sure that people get to understand 
uh, what they are expect when they go places, when they sit in the restaurant, when they go to hotel, when they go to the beach. But at least you see that the situation that has happened last week when Bang Sam Beach reopened only one day, and then we see a lot of trash <laughs> left yeah, yeah. behind, and that's mean uh oh. Uh, don't even think about international traveling coming in. Just think about the locals who will, mm. who will reappear, but they cannot be the same behavior anymore. Mm -hmm. Let's make this an exercise that we train ourselves, train the host, train the guests to make sure that now we know what we should do with this opportunity. Yeah. So it's very tough challenge for the whole industry and probably Absolutely. even, even to, <laughs> to make the strategy to focus on domestic tourism, it's tough challenge as well. Thank you very much, Senator Virasak, for joining us in English version. But I'd like you to stay on and watch this clip together with us when young kids thanks medical personnel. And then we'll return and talk to you more in Thai. Stay with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you all the doctors and medical workers for working very hard. We will do our best to protect ourselves to make your work easier. Thank you. Thank you, doctor, nurses, and medical staff for taking care of us, protecting us from COVID-19. I know you work hard and you are excellent. I promise that I will keep staying home. Please take care of yourself. I will be a good girl and good cat. Bye! Hello, my name is Chris. Um, many thanks to the doctor, doctors, nurses, and hey. doctors who are hey. at work of fighting the COVID-19 pandemic for our hey. safety. Hey. I think you I are think. our heroes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. เวลาของวิกฤตโควิด19ก็เป็นช่วงที่ต้องปรับตัวเพราะว่าถูกกระทบกันเกือบทุกภาคส่วนเลยนะคะคุณเทพชัยหนึ่งในนั้นก็คืออุตสาหกรรมการท่องเที่ยวค่ะโดนหนักที่สุดด้วยมึงครับเนี่ยจะโดนหนักมากมากกว่าส่วนอื่นๆด้วยซ้ําไปนะครับใช่ค่ะและจนถึงขณะนี้ก็ยังไม่มีวิแววว่าจะฟื้นได้อย่างไรนะคะแต่เพื่อที่จะประเมินอนาคตการท่องเที่ยวไทยในยุคโควิด19ค่ะช่วงนี้ท่านดรวิรศักดิ์โคสุรัตน์สมาชิกวุฒิสภาและอดีตรัฐมนตรีว่าการกระทรวงการท่องเที่ยวและกีฬาอยู่ในรายการกับเราค่ะสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับคุณวิทยาคงเห็นคลิปเมื่อสักครู่ใช่ไหมครับต้องเห็นคลิปเมื่อสักครู่ใช่ไหมครับมันเป็นความรู้สึกที่ดีมากเลยนะครับที่เห็นเด็กๆรับรู้เกี่ยวกับวิกฤตที่กำลังเกิดขึ้นในขณะนี้แล้วก็มีส่วนในการให้กําลังใจคุณหมอพยาบาลแล้วก็เจ้าหน้าที่ที่ตอนนี้เป็นด่านหน้าเป็นแนวหน้าในการทําสงครามกับเจ้าไวรัสตัวร้ายตัวนี้เลยนะครับวิกฤตแบบนี้ไม่เคยมีมาก่อนในบันทึกของประวัติศาสตร์มนุษย์ที่เราสามารถจะจำความกันได้ดังนั้นเนี่ยสิ่งเดียวที่เรามีกันและกันคือการและกันแล้วก็กำลังใจเพราะนั้นไม่มีใครมีสูตรสำเร็จหรอกครับว่ามันจะจบแบบไหนแล้วมันจะออกมายังไงแล้วใครจะสำเร็จบ้างเพราะความจริงแล้วเนี่ยเราก็คงจะพอเดาได้ว่าผู้เชี่ยวชาญจำนวนมากทางด้านการแพทย์บอกว่าปีนี้เนี่ยคงยังไม่สามารถหวังอะไรได้มากในเรื่องของวัคซีนหวังว่าซีนได้คงจะเป็นประมาณสักปีหน้านั่นแปลว่าบรรยากาศของการผ่อนคลายการล็อกดาวน์เปิดเมืองเปิดการเดินทางมันก็คงจะเกิดขึ้นอย่างนี้แหละแต่พอเปิดปุ๊บมันก็จะต้องมีเรื่องของการระบาดกลับมาใหม่เพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยไม่มีใครจะสามารถล็อกดาวน์ไปได้ตลอดแล้วก็ไม่มีใครสามารถบอกได้ว่าการคลายล็อกดาวน์เป็นสิ่งผิดเพราะทุกคนรู้ว่าการที่ทําให้คนไม่สามารถออกจากบ้านไปทํางานได้มันจะเป็นภาระมหาศาลทางด้านงบประมาณเป็นภาระมหาศาลของครอบครัวเป็นสิ่งที่ไปทางความยากจนไปทางความเหลื่อมล้ําให้หนักเข้าไปเรื่อยๆเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยก็ต้องพยายามที่จะกลับให้คนกลับมาทําใช้ชีวิตทํางานแต่ว่ามันจะเป็นงานที่เต็มไปด้วยการบริหารความเสี่ยงเหมือนการฝึกวัฒนธรรมการอยู่ร่วมกันครั้งใหม่ยิ่งใหญ่ที่สุดที่มนุษย์เคยเจอเดียวค่ะ
พูดถึงอุตสาหกรรมการท่องเที่ยวนะคะดูมืดมนมากเลยนะคะท่านสววีรศักดิ์เห็นแสงสว่างที่ปลายอุโมงค์อย่างไรบ้างไหมคะในช่วงเวลานี้ค่ะผมเห็นครับแต่เห็นในฐานะที่มองเห็นว่าต่อไปนี้เราไม่ควรจะมุ่งใช้ท่องเที่ยวเป็นรายได้หลักแต่ต้องให้มันเป็นรายได้เสริมนะครับใช้ท่องเที่ยวเป็นเครื่องมือในการช่วยลดความเหลื่อมล้ําแก้ไขปัญหาความยากจนเพื่อทําให้ทุกคนมีกําลังใจทุกคนมีความรู้สึกว่ามีทรัพยากรธรรมชาติมีกันและกันและมีวัฒนธรรมของคนไทยที่ช่วยเหลือกันวัฒนธรรมที่ขณะนี้กําลังตั้งกันขึ้นมาวัฒนธรรมตู้น้ําใจตู้กับข้าวที่ทําให้คนมาสามารถหยิบกันได้นั้นเนี่ยอันนี้เป็นสิ่งที่ดีมากนะครับไม่เคยถูกสร้างมาก่อนแล้วมันถูกสร้างปลูกปรับขึ้นมาถ้ามันอยู่ต่อแล้วมันอยู่รอดได้ในสุดคนก็จะไปเที่ยวเหมือนกันนะครับแต่เขาไปเนี่ยเขาไม่ได้ไปเที่ยววิวเขาไปดูเขาไปสัมผัสความงามของน้ําใจที่มีแล้วเห็นไหมครับว่าถ้าการไปอย่างนั้นเนี่ยเขาก็ไม่ได้ตั้งใจว่าเขาจะต้องไปอยู่หรูอยู่สบายพิเศษแต่เขาอยากจะไปเพื่อให้แน่ใจว่าเนี่ยคือบ้านเขาเราได้เห็นตัวอย่างแล้วนะครับว่าคนไทยที่กลับมาจากต่างประเทศเข้ามาอยู่ในช่วงสเตจคนจีนที่รัฐกาหนดว่าจะต้องไปอยู่ในช่วงดูอาการสิบสี่วันนั้นเนี่ยเราดูแลกันและกันได้ดีที่สุดแห่งหนึ่งของโลกที่ญี่ปุ่นเขาก็ตั้งร้านกระดาษที่นอนกระดาษให้นอนกันอยู่ที่สนามบินเลยไม่มีที่พื้นที่ส่วนตัวอะไรมากไปกว่าแค่รางกระดาษแต่ของเรานั้นให้เป็นห้องห้องมีอินเทอร์เน็ตให้ใช้มีแอร์ให้อยู่ผมคิดว่าอันเนี้ยมันคือกระบวนการที่ทําให้เรารู้ว่าคุณค่าของงานบริการที่เรามีและนั่นคือหัวใจและเป็นแม่เหล็กดึงดูดคนทั้งโลกให้อยากมาเที่ยวประเทศไทยก็คือเรื่องนี้วิวสวยนั้นเนี่ยเราก็ดีใจละว่าช่วงเนี้ยหาดสวยเลยเกาะสวยเลยป่าก็สวยเลยอะไรก็สวยไปหมดเลยเราอยากจะรักษาไว้ใช่ไหมถามว่าทําไมถึงอยากรักษาเพราะว่ามันจะอยู่ต่อให้ไปถึงคนรุ่นหลานรุ่นลูกของเราต่อไปได้ถ้าเรารักษามันไว้ได้แบบนั้นเพราะฉะนั้นการที่ได้เงินขึ้นมาในช่วงสิบยีปีที่ผ่านมานั้นเนี่ยก็ทําให้คนร่ารวยขึ้นนะครับมีฐานะดีขึ้นมีคนเข้ามาได้รับผลประโยชน์มากขึ้นแต่ไม่มากพอเพราะอะไรเพราะว่าระบบของซัพพลายเชนที่ใช้กันอยู่นั้นเนี่ยสี่ล้านคนได้ไม่เท่ากันได้ไม่ใกล้เคียงกันและนั่นคือที่มาที่ทําให้เราต้องไปออกนโยบายเรื่องพาเที่ยวเมืองรองเหอะเพราะว่าเมืองหลักหนักรับหนักเกินไปละเมืองรองยังไม่ค่อยได้อะไรเลยแต่เวลานี้บรรยากาศของคนที่อยากจะไปเที่ยวถ้าให้เขาถามว่าถ้ายูจะออกไปเที่ยวกับครอบครัวจะไปไหนคนก็ตอนนี้อยากจะไปที่ท,ที่คนไม่แออัดแล้วที่ไหนแล้วครับคนไม่แออัดเมืองรองเพราะนั้นโอกาสเมืองรองก็ปรากฏขึ้นมาเพราะนั้นถ้าทําให้โอกาสมันเกิดขึ้นแต่ในระหว่างที่เรากําลังวุ่นวายกับเรื่องโควิด19ในความมืดมิดอย่างนี้นั้นเนี่ยสิ่งที่ยังก่อสร้างต่อไปเรื่อยๆคือรถไฟครับรถไฟรางคู่รถไฟฟ้าต่างๆยังคงเดินหน้ากันต่อไปและหลายอันเนี่ยทางยกระดับพิเศษเนี่ยก็กลังจะเสร็จภายในปีนี้ไล่ไปเรื่อยๆตลอดทั้งสามปีข้างหน้านี้เพราะนั้นเนี่ยแปลว่าการเดินทางมันจะเปลี่ยนรูปแบบ <coughs> จากที่เคยเคยต้องทุกอย่างต้องบินต่อไปนี้ก็จะมีรถไฟให้ใช้เวลานี้คนกําลังแล้วก็เป็นช่วงโควิดเหมือนกันที่ทําให้ราคาน้ํามันถูกลงอย่างไม่เคยมีมาก่อนก็ทำให้คนเวลานี้วางแผนในการที่จะขับรถไปตามที่ต่างๆท่าเที่ยวได้อันนี้ก็เป็นช่วยช่วยทําให้เกิดบรรยากาศอีกแบบหนึ่งเหมือนกันแล้วก็ถ้าไปเขาก็อยากจะไปอยู่กับชุมชนเพราะเขารู้สึกว่าคุยกันรู้เรื่องมีน้ําใจสวยงามมีความจริงแท้ของพวกนี้ผมคิดว่าในที่สุดแล้วเนี่ยท่องเที่ยวไทยกลับมาใหม่ได้แล้วก็จะกลับมาในลักษณะที่ทําให้เกิดความเป็นโอกาสแก่คนอื่นๆได้ดีขึ้นเพียงแต่แต่ละคนนั้นเนี่ยจะคงไม่ได้อาหารคําใหญ่ๆช้อนใหญ่ๆเคี้ยวตุ้ยๆอย่างนั้นเนี่ยคงจะไม่เกิดขึ้นง่ายๆละเว้นแต่เป็นกรณีที่จะไปทําให้เกิดเรื่องของการท่องเที่ยวเชิงสุขภาพการเดินทางเชิงสุขภาพเพราะในอีกหลายเมืองในโลกเวลานี้นั้นเนี่ยยังหน้าตาแย่กว่าเรามากเลยนะครับยังเสียชีวิตกันเป็นร้อยเป็นพันอยู่ทุกวันนั้นเนี่ยคนที่เขามีสตางค์มากๆแล้วเขาบอกว่าเขาก็อยู่ตรงนั้นไม่ไหวเหมือนกันอันนี้ก็เป็นเรื่องอีกเรื่องหนึ่งที่ถ้าหากว่าอุตสาหกรรมการบริการท่องเที่ยวและอุตสาหกรรมด้านการรักษาพยาบาลค่อยๆค,คุยกันเพราะตอนนี้ต้องเข้าใจว่าหมอพยาบาลเหนื่อยมากให้เขาพ
ายในไม่เกินสิ้นปีนี้เนี่ยจะเกิดบรรยากาศการขาดแคลนอาหารแน่นอนแต่บ้านเราเป็นครัวโลกเรามีอาหารไม่ใช่แค่เลี้ยงคนไทยได้เลี้ยงโลกได้เพราะนั้นตู้กับข้าวเมื่อสักครู่เนี่ยเลี้ยงคนไทยแต่เมื่อเป็นเช่นนั้นแล้วเนี่ยเราค่อยๆวางแผนของคนนี้ไปเนี่ยเราอาจจะไม่ได้เงินก้อนเงินถุงเงินถังมากมายนะแต่เราได้เงินที่เป็นน้ําซึมบ่อทรายอยู่กับเราไปได้นานๆแล้วค่อยๆกระจายก็จะทําให้ผลไม้และอะไรต่อมีอะไรของไทยที่ผลิตออกมานั้นเนี่ยแทนที่จะส่งออกได้นั้นเนี่ยมีคนเข้ามารับประทานอยู่ในนี้ครับครับครับคุณคุณวิรศักดิ์ครับสมมุติถ้าจะทําอย่างที่คุณวิรศักดิ์เสนอแนะนะครับก็คือไม่ทําให้การท่องเที่ยวเป็นเป้าหมายหลักในการหาไรายได้เข้าประเทศอย่างเดียวแล้วก็ทําให้การท่องเที่ยวเป็นการท่องเที่ยวอย่างยั่งยืนเนี่ยมันควรจะเริ่มต้นที่ไหนแล้วใครควรจะเป็นคนเริ่มต้นครับเพราะว่าถ้าเราคุยคนในวงการท่องเที่ยวหรือแม้แต่นักการเมืองที่มาดูแลกระทรวงท่องเที่ยวเนี่ยก็จะพูดแต่ตัวเลขอย่างเดียวนะครับก็เท่าที่จําได้ใช่ไหมครับว่าเดี๋ยวจะให้เข้าประเทศไทยไม่ต้องมีวีซ่าหรือวีซ่าออนไลน์เวิร์กก็คือเหมือนกับตัวเลขที่เรามีทุกวันเนี้ยเกือบ40ล้านคนต่อปีปีที่แล้วเนี่ยมันยังไม่พออีกเราคงห้ามอะไรใครทําอะไรไม่ได้หรอกแต่เราเตือนให้รู้ได้ว่าถ้าทําไอ้อย่างเดิมโอกาสที่มันจะเกิดอาการแบบนี้คือการระบาดรอบใหม่เนี่ยมันก็เกิดได้เพราะขนาดนี้เรารู้อยู่แล้วว่ายังไงปีนี้เนี่ยวัคซีนคงยังไม่มาครับวิธีรักษาก็อาจจะเป็นแค่บรรเทาเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยถ้าตั้งเป้าที่ตัวเลขคําถามคือเราจะบริหารสัดส่วนแค่สิบเปอร์เซ็นของคนเจ็บคือคนเข้ามาแล้วเกิดติดเชื้อสิบเปอร์เซ็นแล้วติดเชื้อนั้นเนี่ยก็จะต้องสูญเสียประมาณสิบเปอร์เซ็นต์นั้นเนี่ยไวเลยถ้าเรารับความจริงของสิ่งนี้ไม่ได้ผมคิดว่ามันก็คงคุยอย่างอื่นลําบากแต่ณขณะนี้เราต้องเข้าใจนะครับว่าต้องขอบคุณบุคลากรทางการแพทย์พยาบาลสาธารณสุขของเราแล้วเนี่ยดูแลจนกระทั่งเราอยู่ติดอันดับต้นๆเลยของโลกแต่สิ่งหนึ่งที่ปรับครั้งได้เคยพูดเอาไว้แล้วผมฟังแล้วฟังหัวเลยก็คือว่าอย่าระบาดอีกรอบนะเพราะไม่มีตังค์ที่จะมาแจกกันแล้วนะณขณะนี้เราก้าวไปสู่การกู้แล้วนะครับแล้วสิ่งที่เราได้ในปีนี้เป็นบังเอิญแท้ๆทั้งๆที่อาจจะมีคนบ่นว่าแม่การโหวตเรื่องของสภาในงบประมาณเนี่ยโหวตแล้วมีปัญหาเลยต้องไปโหวตใหม่ไปเสียเวลาไปอีกในที่สุดงบประมาณปี2562นั้นเนี่ยเนั้นงบปี63นั้นเนี่ยกว่าจะได้ใช้ได้ผ่านไปแล้วต้องเกือบ5เดือนอก็เลยเยอะตรงนั้นเนี่ยเลยทำให้เรามีเงินที่ยังไม่ได้ใช้เก็บไว้เหลือเกินครึ่งถังอ่ะก็เลยทาให้เราไม่ต้องกู้หนักในรอบนี้และยังสามารถที่จะไปโอนงบมานคืนกลับมาเพื่อจะมาทําเรื่องอื่นที่เราจะมีต้องทําในปีนี้ให้ได้โดยที่ไม่ต้องกู้มากจนเกินไปแต่ปีหน้าไม่แน่นะครับปีหน้าถามว่าถ้าเราจะไปเก็บภาษีจากใครในเมื่อทุกคนก็ไม่มีใครอีรายได้เป็นชิ้นเป็นอันนะเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยเราต้องคิดความจริงอย่าไปคิดความฝันเก่าๆความฝันเก่าๆเนี่ยหยุดคิดได้แล้วคิดความจริงแล้วเผชิญกับความจริงซะไม่มีวิธีเลือกใดนะฮะในการเลือกเผชิญกับความจริงด้วยความรู้เพราะขณะนี้เนี่ยความรู้ก็คือว่าผู้เดินทางนักท่องเที่ยวเขาจะเดินทางด้วยความระมัดระวังละราคาที่ถูกกว่าไม่ใช่เป็นสิ่งที่เขาสนใจอีกต่อไปสมมุติวันนี้ผมให้ตั๋วฟรีคุณเทพประชัยไปไปปารีสอู่ฮั่นหรือว่าไปนิวยอร์กกันสักอาทิตย์หนึ่งลดให้ห้าสิบเปอร์เซ็นเลยคิดหนักหน่อยคิดหนักแม้ว่าจะบอกว่าก็ต้องคิดหนักใช่ไหมครับไม่ได้มีอะไรว่าใครเลยแต่ว่ามันเป็นความจริงนะมันเป็นความจริงที่ทุกคนรู้สึกระมัดระวังแล้วไปแล้วเรารู้ต้องคิดต่อไปว่าร้านอาหารเปิดหรือเปล่ารู้จะทานกินที่ไหนเนี่ยกินกับใครคงไม่เนี่ยที่จะไปเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยแปลว่านี่คือความจริงถ้านี่คือความจริงเราก็ต้องบริหารนโยบายและเป้าหมายที่เราอยากจะได้ด้วยความจริงเหมือนกันค่ะแสดงว่าการท่องเที่ยวภายในประเทศน่าจะต้องบูมขึ้นกว่านี้ไหมคะน่าจะเป็นกลุ่มก้อนที่น่าจะช่วยกันหันกลับมาทําให้น่าเที่ยวมากขึ้นใช่ไหมคะการท่องเที่ยวภายในประเทศเนี่ยคะ่ะโดยหลักการแล้วน่าจะเป็นอย่างนั้นแต่สิ่งที่สําคัญกว่าคือที่ผมมองท่าท่องเที่ยวภายในประเทศก็เพราะว่าเป็นกลุ่มที่คุยกันน่าจะรู้เรื่องก่อนถ้าเราคุยกันไม่รู้เรื่องแล้วไปแล้วเป็นบรรยากาศเหมือนอย่างที่ไปไปเททิ้งขยะกันนั่งดื่มทานกันอยู่ที่ริมหาดบางแสนนั้นเนี่ยอย่าว่าแต่ชาวต่างประเทศชาวไทยก็ไม่ควรเที่ยวถ้าเป็นแบบนี้อย่าเพิ่งออกม
ที่เตรียมการสื่อสารกับเขาดังนั้นชัดเจนรู้เรื่องล่วงหน้าได้มากพอเลยประเภทพาชูธงเดินพาเที่ยวเฉยๆนั้นเนี่ยอาจจะไม่ใช่เป้าหมายของเขาอีกต่อไปนะเขากำลังสนใจในเรื่องของการที่จะชดเชยในเรื่องสุขภาพของเขามากกว่าเขาต้องการระมัดระวังไม่ปู่ย่าลูกหลานของเขามีโอกาสพลาดไปต้องติดเชื้อเวลาอย่างนี้นั้นเนี่ยมันทําให้เราเห็นว่าถ้าเราเข้าใจลูกค้าเท่านั้นนะเราจึงจะได้รายได้ที่เราอยากได้ถ้าเราไม่เข้าใจลูกค้าเราเข้าใจแต่ความอยากได้ของเราไม่มีทางได้หรอกครับเอาละค่ะก็เป็นแนวทางการประเมินสถานการณ์การท่องเที่ยวไทยผ่านสายตาสมาชิกบุธิสภาวีรศักดิ์โคสุรัตน์วันนี้ขอบพระคุณมากนะคะที่มาร่วมรายการไทย PBS World Tonight ทางภาคภาษาอังกฤษและภาษาไทยค่ะแต่ช่วงนี้หมดเวลาของรายการแล้วลาท่านผู้ชมไปเลยนะคะขอบพระคุณมากค่ะขอบคุณครับสวัสดีครับเราทำทุกทีเอสเวิลด์ไนท์และสวัสดีกันค่ะ